This is Matthew Cratter's Bitcoin University. Today, I want to answer the question, did Satoshi spam the blockchain? I've been seeing this in the comment section a couple of times, asking me, why are you so against things like inscriptions and large op returns when Satoshi himself inscribed stuff in the blockchain? People, of course, referring to the Genesis block, block number zero, in which this data was embedded by Satoshi. This famous newspaper headlines, Times Chancellor uh, from the Times, uh, January 3rd, 2009, Chancellor on the brink of a second bailout for banks. And this is what this is embedded in what's called the Coinbase transaction, which we're going to talk about. But first, what is this headline? This is, as we said, the Times, January 3rd, 2009. We can see how much cheaper dining out was back then, five pounds to eat at four Gordon Ramsay favorites. We can see some things never change. Israel's preparing to send in tanks and troops into Gaza. But here's the real headline that Satoshi is alluding to, Chancellor on the brink of a second bailout for banks. This was sort of as the great financial crisis of 2008, 2009 was winding down. Now, why did Satoshi embed this newspaper headline? There are a number of reasons. The first one is, of course, proof of time. It's sort of a timestamp because the January 3rd, 2009 newspaper headline is proof that this block, this Genesis block, could not have been created before that, which proves to the world that Bitcoin did not have a pre-mine like scam coins like Ethereum and Cardano did. And this is essential if your coin is to have a fair launch. Now, this newspaper headline, as we saw, is not an op return. It's not in that part of the transaction. It's not an inscription either. It's in what's called the Coinbase transaction. Coinbase here has nothing to do with Brian Armstrong's scammy company, his shipcoin casino. Coinbase transaction is always the first Bitcoin transaction in a block, in the blockchain. And it's what's used by the miner or mining pool to pay itself the block reward. And it gets to be uh, this block reward is spendable after I believe 100 100 blocks. Block reward, of course, is comprised of the block subsidy of 3.125 Bitcoin plus transaction fees for all transactions included in that block. The Coinbase transaction is also how new Bitcoin enters into circulation. Currently, 3.125 Bitcoin per block enters into circulation, and that will be halved sometime in 2028 at the next halving. Coinbase transaction for this reason does not have any inputs because it's it's actually brand new Bitcoin entering entering into circulation. And some trivia about the Genesis block itself, block number zero, that Bitcoin, that 50 Bitcoin block reward from the Genesis block is hard coded, is hard coded not to be spendable. Now, how easy is it for a miner or a mining pool to embed arbitrary data in the Coinbase transaction? Well, it's quite easy, but here's the thing: the miner has to actually mine the block after doing that, which is quite expensive and quite difficult to do, as you would imagine. To mine a block today, a miner must spend on average about 3.125 Bitcoin, that block subsidy, so it's about $365,000 in electricity and other costs. And how much data does that, spending that much on average, allow them to embed in the Coinbase? It allows them embed, to embed 100 bytes of data. So spending $365,000 to embed 100 bytes of data, this is not something that anyone is worried about. In fact, on the order of magnitude, it's very close to the 80 bytes that are currently allowed by def default in Bitcoin Core node software for op return. It's quite different from spending a few dollars or less to send 100,000 bytes of op return, which is what's gonna be possible with Bitcoin Core version 30. If you're finding this video interesting so far, just pause here really briefly to ask you to help to support this channel's educational mission. Hit the subscribe button, that does really help. Leave a like, leave a comment, question, suggestion for a future video, and share this video with a friend or family member. So we can see here from Mastering Bitcoin 3rd Edition, Coinbase data size, length of the Coinbase data that you can embed here as a miner, anything from 2 to 100 bytes. So it's a 100 byte maximum, just as we have an 80 byte maximum currently on op return. This added data in the Coinbase fulfills another function as well. It provides extra entropy that the miner can use when hashing. So you can just put random characters up there in the Coinbase uh, data place up to 100 bytes, or you can put the name of your mining pool, for example, or you could even embed a prayer like Luke Dasher did many, many years ago. This is block 139. 1,792, 14 years ago. And this is from Eligius, which is the previous incarnation of ocean mining. But in this block, in the Coinbase, he embedded uh, Eligius Benedictus, Jesus Christus, Verus Deus, et Verus Homo, True God and True Man. So he, he embedded this prayer in there. He also did in block 139,690, another, another prayer, Benedictum Nomen Sanctum 
Eus. It turns out that Eligius or Eligius, after whom the pool, pool is named and to which one of those prayers was directed, is the patron saint of goldsmiths, which is kind of cool when you think about the analogies to digital gold. He was a Frankish goldsmith. Now, what you may or may not know, as I just said, is that Eligius or Eligius is the precursor pool to ocean. And this is how long Luke Dasher and Jason Hughes have been at this game. So it's another important thing to remember. When someone tries to tell you that they don't know what they're doing, some really young Bitcoin core dev who's only been working on the project since 2021 or something has some comment about how Luke Dasher doesn't know what he's talking about. Also remember this when someone tells you that Luke used to do inscriptions. The inscriptions exploit was discovered in 2023 and is really the result of sloppy dev work by Bitcoin Core when it came to the taproot upgrade. These prayers were embedded, as we said, in the Coinbase transaction, not in the witness data like inscriptions are. And I've heard there was also Luke who popularized putting the name of the mining pool in the Coinbase, which is what most mining pools do today, as you can see on mempool.space, SEC pool and pool foundry, etc. And this is quite helpful, especially in an era of a lot of mining, mining pool centralization, just to know where the blocks are coming from. So we can see, for example, foundry, which is one of the large American mining pools. Uh, we can tell that they mine these blocks because they put a message in the Coinbase transaction. And the most they can put in there is 100 bytes. This is something that you can also do if you point your hash to Ocean and you mine with them. So for example, you can put your name here, mined on Ocean, or you can just, uh, I'll show you two examples of this. First one here is nice hash. And so in this case, nice, nice hash would be first in the Coinbase and then Ocean, or if it's mined purely with Ocean, you can see that there's no um, no prefix mining pool there. So that's how that works. That's all data from the Coinbase transaction. So in conclusion, it's really hard to mine a block. Successfully mining a block enables you to embed only 100 bytes of arbitrary data in the Bitcoin blockchain. So this leads us back to the question again and again. So why is Bitcoin Core now making it possible to easily embed 100,000 bytes of data in the blockchain for just a few bucks by blowing open OpReturn? Coinbase transaction is not a place where you can stuff a lot of data. And again, it costs $360,000 or so to embed that data because you have to successfully mine it. So these things really matter. These defaults matter. How much data can be embedded? And this is an essential part of how Bitcoin works. And it's important to keep these arbitrary data places, these, these data caps low. So we have op return currently at 80. Uh, it's at 40 on, on Bitcoin knots. We have the Coinbase transaction at 100 bytes. And then we have the inscriptions hack, which is just an actual exploit that needs to be fixed. So this is the problem when you blow out op return to 100,000 bytes and Coinbase is still at 100 bytes. It's these things were much more parallel when the op return was at 80 bytes. Changing Bitcoin, even mempool policy comes with a host of unknown unknowns. It should not be attempted frivolously as Bitcoin Core is now doing. If you want to go a little bit deeper into these changes, I'll put a link to my video here, Bitcoin Knots versus Bitcoin Core, in which I summarize this whole dilemma. I also put a link to this video, which I found really, really helpful. This was a discussion between Mechanic and Jason Hughes talking about all these different places you can embed arbitrary data. So I took much of this information from Jason's discussion of the Coinbase transaction, but this was a very cool, uh, fairly technical video. If you want to check it out, I'll put a link in the description notes below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.